Hi everyone, my name is Chris Huntingford. I'm part of the Microsoft Dynamics CRM pre-sales team at Hitachi Solutions. Today we'll be talking about integrating service and tenant management for housing authorities. From an agenda point of view, we'll be going through a bit of an introduction, then moving on to the demo where we have tenants requesting a repair, repairs management and scheduling, reporting, and then finally some Q&A. To move on to the introduction, from a solution overview point of view, we typically see elements such as housing development, housing management, financials and HR, procurement, social care, and property maintenance. This is all layered with an omni-channel serv customer service layer, which allows customers to interact with the housing authority through the relevant device or channel that's specific to them. The piece we'll be chatting about today is through web and voice as a channel, and then into the property maintenance side of things, and this is all run by Microsoft Dynamics CRM. I'd like to move on to the demonstration and I'm going to switch screens into the Microsoft Dynamics CRM interface. As a customer service representative, part of my job is to help customers resolve calls, queries and complaints in a successful manner. The way in which I start my day is by logging into the Dynamics CRM user interface via my browser and accessing my customer service representative dashboard. This dashboard gives me information consolidated in one place relevant to my user role. As an example, if I was a manager, I would gain a more global view of what was happening within the customer service side of my business. But from this point of view, I am a single customer service representative and this information is relevant to me. For the first part of my demonstration, I'll be dialing in from an external device, recognizing the number and then logging the call against the tenant's record. I'll be opening up my mobile phone and dialing Hitachi Housing. You can see that the contact record has been recognized and this automatically generates a screen pop. The screen pop is for Sandra Jones. I can tell you immediately that Sandra Jones lives at number one Marigold Close. I can tell you all of her contact details, any interactions I've had with her stored in the middle of the page here, as well as any previous cases or calls that have been logged. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start my call off with a dialog. A dialog acts as a guided process for the call center agents in order to resolve the call that Sandra is typically trying to log. I can tell you immediately, first of all, that it is a responsive repair call that Sandra's logged, so she's given me some information. Secondly, I need to verify that I'm talking to the right person. So I would typically ask Sandra a set of questions in this example, we're using two. So the postal code and the date of birth are being, or what's being verified. I'll move on to my next step. I have a couple of tasks or things that I can do. Firstly, I can either transfer to an agent. I can view a knowledge base article based on the information Sandra's given me, or I can create a case. From the fact that she's mentioned that it's a repair, I've got various information regarding repairs over here. But in this case, we're going to log a case. This is a more formal call version. Firstly, we know that Sandra just mentioned that there's a door related issue. So the lock on her door has been broken. This could be to any sort of um, reason. We'll just say it's antisocial behavior for this example. And then finally, we know that we need to log a repair. Now, this is very important because it dictates the process in which the case is being resolved. We'll hit next. Finally, the case has been generated. We'll click the link over here to open the case up. And you can see that the standard case record has been generated. Very importantly, at the very top, the process that I'm going to be undertaking or following is relevant to the type of case that has been logged. What we're going to do in this scenario is we know that this is a repair. So for me, I need to schedule somebody to go and either take a look at the issue or potentially even repair the door itself. To do this, we create a work order. A work order acts as a container and, and allows me to schedule the resources, generate work order tasks, as well as potentially add in product or chargeable services. I'm also able to apply an SLA to this work order. 
I'll save this work order and you'll see that based on the information supplied, a three-day SLA has been granted. As I scroll down, there's been a total amount of time allocated for the work order, so this is the, the standard duration. And the reason for that is because there are scheduled work order tasks that are automatically generated based on the type of work order that has been selected. So I can tell you now that there's been a door and lock inspection. There could be some maintenance maintenance that have been applied there. There's a door and lock installation as well as a test and review. And there's a time bucket associated to each one of these. If I wanted to, I could also associate products. So we could have a panel door attached here at a price of 225 pounds. And I could also associate chargeable services. So as I scroll down further, you can see that there's a nominal carpentry free fee, as well as a fee to replace the actual door itself. Now, the reason that this is relevant is because I have the ability to charge this to my tenants or not. If you have a look at the very top here, I've got my add schedule of rates lines and then schedule work order process. If I select a charge to tenant or customer, the process grows and requires me to send a quote to the tenant as well as for the tenant to accept the quote. In this scenario, what I'm going to be doing is not charging this to the customer and I'll be processing through to actually scheduling my work order. In order to schedule work orders, we use what we call the scheduling assistant in Microsoft Dynamics CRM. The scheduling assistant makes use of all of the information supplied by the work order and on the work order form. On the left hand side of the scheduling assistant, you can see that first of all, I have various options that I can apply. The way we're going to start is applying a 100 kilometer radius around the current residence. So we only want to choose people from within 100 kilometers. We also want to make sure that today is the day that is selected as the start day and three days from now, which is within the SLA, somebody would potentially go out and visit um, Sandra Jones. Then finally, well, we know that the skills required to do this are carpentry and the territory that this could be in is London. Let's apply the filters and see what the resources have come up with. You can see I've got loads of different resources that are all available. These are all within 100 kilometers of the relevant area or the, um, the repair. We're going to choose somebody that's fairly close. Now, interestingly enough, Edison is actually on site at that time. So we could potentially select him. And you can see that he's actually got some availability today from 1552 to 1808 so it actually applies that duration of the work order we're going to say schedule and close now this will first of all create a schedule uh, add a schedule to the schedule board as well as alert Edison of the fact that he's got some work to do now that my work here is done and I've scheduled I've scheduled the work order I'm going to jump into my actual schedule board to have a look at where this is and what this looks like Now that I have my schedule board open, I can gain insight into all of the resources and their associated jobs. On the left hand side, I have a list of resources. And please remember, a resource does not just have to be a person, it could also be an asset, a vehicle, or a contractor. In the middle, I have a list of the actual jobs associated to each resource. As I look further left on the schedule board, I have the ability to schedule the information shown here using the filters available here. You can, you can filter by resource type, by service territory, and more. I also have the ability to gain insight into a map view of my resources and where they are. I'll expand this very quickly. Each different pin and different color represents a different resource. As I scroll over the red pin, you can see that that's associated to Josh Smith. Further to that, let's take a look at Edison's jobs that he had scheduled for him. If you remember, the previous job that we scheduled was number 216. That's available for Edison to do at approximately 15.52. This will be made available to Edison via his mobile device. Let's drill into the mobile interface and take a look. As I open my mobile interface, 
you can see I've got various items available to me. I'll open Microsoft Dynamics CRM. These are the menu items available for me from a field service point of view. If I click on the map, it'll locate my exact location as well as the jobs around me. So anything that's close to me for me to fulfill. Anything red is a current job. I can also zoom out and gain insight into what's going on across the rest of the country. So for example, London will have loads of jobs associated to it. And there you go. That's a service territory and there's one Marigold close. The next thing I'd want to do is I'd want to jump into my work order schedule or my list of work orders for completion. Now we know it's Edison, that's me. As I scroll down, you'll see number work order number 00216. As I open that up, you can see that the system status is scheduled, but I actually need to go in and accept this job. And I'll save that. Now, what's important about that is that anything I do on this interface here is then made available for visibility over here to the service desk engineer. So for example, when I jump into 00216 and I say that I'm traveling, and the service desk refreshes, that'll change to purple. And as I continue updating various statuses on the work order itself, so once again, so will the service desk change. There we go. So let's drill into work order number 216 and take a closer look. You can see that there are various elements here. I'm going to drill into the actual work order itself. You can see that it says charge to tenant, no. Vulnerable tenant, no. What's actually happened is I've arrived at the scene. I've decided that I'm going to capture a picture of the door itself. So we'll take a photo of the laptop keyboard here. That'll be attached to the actual work order. We can also gain insight into the actual tasks and activities associated to each work order. Those products are available and here are your service items. Now one thing that's really important is that because this tenant is currently vulnerable we're going to change the status to yes and save that. That will change the actual SLA on the work order from three days to one which means it must be completed today. As I drill back into Microsoft Dynamics CRM and actually open up the work order itself, you can see that the time frame is changed to 23 hours and 59 minutes. Once I've decided that this work order is complete, which I will show you right now, our select is completed and say save. The, war, the work order time frame as well as the status will change on the dashboard. So when I refresh this, you can see that it's gone to green and the time has actually changed to a much shorter time, which means that it took me less time to resolve the work order and it actually checks the time that the work order was resolved on the mobile device over here. In saying that, after doing this, I can then process this for billing and send this out to the customer as a report saying the door was completed and potentially fill in the survey. Finally, to that, I then have the ability to drill into my reporting and gain insight into all of my field service incidents per area. As an example, if I wanted to drill in per team, now this is from a global point of view and just an example, it would highlight each section of work orders per area per team. I could also gain insight into the information from an SLA point of view. So you can see currently that these work orders are currently outside of SLA. All the black ones there. All the blue ones are inside SLA and all the red ones are successes. And I can drill in per team to tell which team is doing the best. There we go. Instead of drilling into the graphs, I could also go and type in an actual English query such as show number of cases by type. 
This is nice and intuitive and an easy way for me to understand information relevant to my Lydamic CRM system as well as all the field service incidents that have taken place. I've gone into a fair amount of detail about bringing cases in directly through telephone, but the channel we haven't spoken about is web. What I'll do as Sandra Jones is log into the Hitachi Solutions property website. You can see that I have the ability to drill into current properties that are available, log my name against those, but more importantly, log into a customer portal. The customer portal gives me the ability to log cases that are relevant to my username. You can see that I've logged in already as Sandra Jones and it's asking me to sign out in this menu. Firstly, I'll log into my help desk. This is where all most of my interactions take place. The help desk will provide me with a view of a number of cases that I've logged already. So you can see there's a door repair web case over there. I can also search for knowledge base articles. And these articles will give me insight into repairing the door myself rather than logging the case. You can see there's some great information here. These knowledge base articles are based on keywords as well as phrases that are stored within the CRM solution. I'm not happy with logging a knowledge base article, so what I'm going to do is log a new support request. Now the look and feel of this portal is entirely up to you. This is the demonstration portal and out of the box. First I'll log door repair 002 web 02. That'll be my key name over here. Secondly, I'm going to log the type. So we'll make it a door and lock repair or inspection. Finally, give it the subject which dictates the process in which this case is going to be resolved. We also have the ability to attach pictures or images. So as you can see here, I've got a broken door or lock. This image will be stored against the CRM record. The case has been generated. I can update the case afterwards with case type information. I can view the status where it says active and in progress. I can also add a note to the person resolving the case, asking them to potentially do this as quickly as possible. Now once again, this is real time, so the case will be made relevant directly against the CRM record really quickly. When I go into Microsoft Dynamics CRM, I contact Sandra Jones. You'll see here my list of cases along the right hand side. You'll see door repair 002 web 02, the case has been stored. It'll also store the exact time the case was locked as well. I'll open that up. And once again, we have the ability to take it through that exact process flow I mentioned before and demonstrated earlier, as well as gain insights into the notes. Here is the door lock that was created, as well as the note to resolve as soon as possible. Again, I can gain insights into my dashboards through Microsoft Dynamics CRM to gain an, an understanding of what cases were resolved and when. as well as chat to the people around the relevant cases that were logged. And with that, I conclude today's demonstration for integrating tenants and service management with housing authorities. Today we were able to log cases directly into CRM using web and telephony integration. We were able to take those cases through a process to resolution. In doing so, we were able to create work orders, schedule the right people to go to the right jobs and repair the relevant issues as well as resolve those work orders directly via their mobile devices. Finally, we were able to gain insight using reports within Microsoft Power BI and gain an understanding into the calls and work orders that were resolved. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much.